Hey everyone, welcome to How to Play and Should I Play Flock. This is a game designed by David J. Mortimer and published by AEG. Just look at that box. Who doesn't want to play that game? Okay, so I've set the game up here for three players. What can we see on the board? Well, we've got six action cards, score track, an initiative track, the round marker, we have some reserves for birds, and we have some nests, some eggs, and some worms. So these players discussed it before they started the game, and it turned out that yellow woke up earliest this morning. So yellow gets to go first, and the early bird gets the worm. So they will get three birds and one worm, and the other players will just get three words, three words, three birds, and no worms. All right, so what is the aim of this game? The aim of the game is to have the highest score, as is most games that have a score track. So in this game you will score three times, once in round one, once in round two, and once in round three, and whoever has the highest score at the end of those three rounds is the winner. So what do you do on your turn? Well, you have a choice of two actions. One of the actions is place a bird on a card. The other action is activate an action card. So you can only activate an action card that you have at least one of your birds on, and when you activate it, you take your birds off, and then you get to do the effect of that action card. So, what do all the action cards do? Well, this one, feeding. You take birds off here, and you get worms. So, let's say it looked like this, and yellow chose to activate this card. Yellow would take two birds off, and get three worms. Now, when a card gets activated, everyone has to take their birds off. So it's almost like when you're in the park and you're talking to the pigeons and one flies away and they all fly away. It's just like that. When some birds fly away, they all fly away. So green has to go away. Now, they don't have to activate the card if they don't want, but green does because it gets a free worm. Red is going to do the same. All right. Now, there's an important thing to remember when collecting worms and nests and eggs, and that is you can only ever have six of each particular resource. So you can never have more than six worms, six eggs, and six nests. So you might activate this card now, yellow might, with four worms and get three, but unfortunately you only get two of them because you can only ever have six. And it's really important that you remember that. So that's the feeding card. Nesting card, exactly the same, except you get nests. The laying card, you use those nests to gain eggs. So let's say yellow had three nests and they took one bird off here. They would then give it one nest and gain one egg, like that. Then you use the eggs to hatch. So if you take a bird off here, you pay one worm, one egg, and you gain a bird, like that. And this is where the pool of birds are that you can add over here. So these are the four action cards that you'll use the most, but there's two other action cards here. Now, I just wanna mention that when you set up the game, you can flip them depending on how many players you have. So I've set this up for a three-player game, but you can flip them uh, if you're playing with fewer or more players. So the dominance card, let's put some birds on here, and then we will uh, let's do this. And then we'll show you what this one does. So the dominance card, when this card is activated, so let's say green wants to activate this card and wants to take the bird off, we have to work out the pecking order. So we have to work out who has the most birds on that card. So you can see here it's tie between red and yellow. So when there's a tie, we use the initiative track to break it. We are activating the dominance card and you'll see on the initiative track here it says dominance. So that means dominance ties are broken from the right. So that means red will go before green, which will go before yellow. So red is first on this card. So the first player, they will take their birds off, then they will move their marker to the number one spot on the initiative track and shove all the other guys down like that. So now next is gonna be yellow. Now yellow does this action here. This action is different to this one. On this action, you take your birds from here and then you place them on any one of the other five action cards. So let's say there was a red bird here on nesting. Yellow takes these off and puts it on the nesting card. The other thing you get to do is you get to then remove a bird belonging to another player and then that bird is returned to the pool. So when you do that, you can tell the bird to flock off and then everyone will think you're hilarious. Okay, so then green would do the same and they might go over to the feeding card. So that's the dominance card. This one here is the competition card and this is used for scoring. So I'm gonna get some birds out and show you an example of scoring now. Okay, so now this card is gonna get activated. So 
The first thing to look at is this bit here, the activation zone. This tells you when this card can be activated. So unlike these cards that can be activated by anyone who has a bird on that card, this card can only be activated if there is a total number of birds on the card. So there has to be at least four birds on here in round one. We have five, so we're okay. Um, and that means that that can be activated by someone who has a bird on that card. So let's say yellow is gonna activate the card now. First thing we have to do is upkeep. So we have to home and feed our birds. So we count how many birds we have, and then we work out how many we have over two. So how many birds more than two we have. So let's get yellow, one, two, three, four, five. So yellow has three birds more than two. So they must pay for those birds. For each bird, one nest and one worm. So luckily yellow has three nests and three worms so they can keep their birds. Now we'll look at green. One, two, three, four, five, six. Green is six birds. However, only has two nests and two worms. So that means green can only keep four birds. So they will pay for those extra two and now has to get rid of two of them. So green is gonna get rid of this bird here and this bird here. So those birds go back to the reserve over here. Red has one, two, three, four, five. So can afford to upkeep all of them. So all the birds have been fed and nested. So next they will be relocated. So again, we'll work out the pecking order on this card. So red and green are tied for the most. Now the competition card, the ties are broken from the left here on the competition track. So red is gonna go first. So we now relocate. When you relocate, you take birds off this card and you put them on any two of the other five cards. Now you can't put it on more than two, uh, maximum of two different cards. So red is gonna work out where they wanna go to try and get some points here. So red's gonna go here and no, red's gonna go here and here, like that. All right, so the next green is gonna relocate. So green is gonna go here and here. And then yellow is gonna relocate, yellow is gonna go here. So unlike when you activate the second part of the dominance card, you don't get to tell other birds to flock off. You have to just go to the card um, and stay there. But you can go to two different cards, which is pretty cool. So next we go to step three, scoring. Okay, so let's so I'll just put these back to where they should have been. No, I just wanna fall over these guys. All right, so let's look at yellow. You score each one point for each bird still left in your reserve here, your pool. So that's one point. Well done yellow, one point on the board, mate. Okay, now we will score points on these cards here. So in the scoring phase, we will look at who has the most birds on each card and they will get points for that. So you'll see a little number above the writing here. The number on the left, the player with the most birds get that many points. The number on the right, the player with the second most birds gets that many points. If there were three different colored birds on one tile, so if yellow had a bird here and they uh, had the fewest, then they would score nothing for that card. If you were the only bird on a card, then you don't get the four plus the three, you just get the four. So let's go through yellow's cards now. Yellow has the most on this, so that's five points. They have a tide on here, but unfortunately red beats them, so they get three, so that's eight. And then here, they beat the green on the tie, so that's another four, so that's 12 points in total. So they're on one, so they go to 13, like that. So now let's look at red. So red gets four, five, six, seven, eight, 12 as well, so red goes to 12. And now we'll look at green. Green is three, eight, 11. Green is just trailing behind there, but that's pretty close, pretty close scoring at the end of that round. Okay, so at the end of the round, we will move the round marker up and then just carry on going clockwise around the table. So these birds stay where they are. You can now activate these cards. You can place more birds if you have any birds left in your pool. Carry on the game, and again, in the second round, there must be at least five birds to activate this card, and then you'll do the upkeep, the relocate, the scoring, and then at the end of the third round, whoever has the highest score is the winner. So that was briefly how to play Flock. Now, should you play Flock? Well, I really like this game. I think it uh, has a really kind of interesting strategic element. It's all about timing. Uh, this card is really important because when where you're on the initiative track, as you can see with these tiebreakers, can make a big difference with how many points you get. 
It's also really important to upkeep your birds. I've seen play, uh, players lose a lot of birds just before the scoring happens and it's cost them a lot of points. So there's a lot of strategy and you can be pretty ruthless in this game if you want to be, which is pretty cool. I did play a two-player game and in the rules they do have an advanced rules suggestion for two players and I definitely recommend playing that with two. It makes it much more strategic. Um, so if you are going to play with two players, make sure you play with those bonus rules. Now there are a few little things that I find a little annoying with this game. The score system is one of them. Uh, like you'll see earlier on, I accidentally knocked these birds over and that happens quite a lot when you're fiddling around here. It's quite a clever, small way of doing the score system and it reminds me of a kind of compact game like, you know, Tiny Epic Galaxies or something, which is, uh, you know, they fit a lot of stuff into a small box. However, the flock box is quite big, as you can see here. And uh, there's a lot of wasted space. So this is what the inside of the box looks like. So you put the action cards here and then there's one bag for all of the tokens. So it takes a little while to separate all the tokens at the start of the game, but I could just buy multiple bags. I just haven't done that yet. So um, there's a lot of empty space in that box, but the artwork's nice and you get a big picture on the front, which is cool. Um, but to be honest, they're the only kind of negative side so I can think of this game. It's uh, really interesting. And I, it took me a long time to kind of get my head around the different strategic elements, but it's really, in, once you get into it, it's definitely worth the effort. So if you do see this game at a board game club or on a board game cafe, definitely give it a play. See if it's the right game for you. So thanks for watching this how to play of Flock. Uh, if you want to check out any more videos or reviews or podcasts, please visit fitchitsandgiggles.com. And, and uh, I'll see you next week. Thanks very much.